Hey, my fella. Look here. Sad boy. One for C-Lab, two for Troy Eagle, three for Wolverine to round out the trio in this episode. Broadcasting live from inside the power band, this is The Blah. In this episode, everybody dies. I'm your host, Santa Mulvey, along with Jarhigo Claus. <laughs> ho, ho, ho. And <laughs> Chad Kringle. Yippee guy, motherfucker. I'm so not <laughs> I'm so not in a Christmas mood at all. Well, that's good cuz it ain't Christmas. Well, at the time of this recording it's not, but No, it's Bruce Miss, you dumb fuck. That's a death. All right, sorry. <laughs> I'm not in a Christmas mood, but I am in a Bruce Miss mood. There you go. Welcome to the show, folks, and merry Bruce Miss to all. And to all a barefoot Bruno. Mm. I could totally go for a barefoot Bruno. Definitely. I need a barefoot Bruno. Hey, big fellas. Look here. <laughs> <laughs> it's wet and it's dry and it's Seagram's. No, it's wet and it's dry. Ma, 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 ma. Seagram's. Golden wine coolers. Seagram's. Golden wine coolers. Wet and it's dry. <laughs> ma, 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 ma. It's been a long time. God damn, it has, dude. Sorry, Bruce. Sorry it's been a long time, Bruce. I'm used to sing that one every episode. For many episodes, yes. Well, I mean, it's it. I think it is the official Bruce Miss Carol, so. Yeah, that is that is right. That is the official Bruce Miss Carol. Dude, I, I want to see a group of people a cappella singing that song with, like, bells and stuff. Right, but, like, all, like, high-noted, like, church choir singing? That's what I mean, yeah. Yeah, right? I right? think what should happen is that Instead of everyone dressing up like carolers with top hats, everyone should dress up like Gruber's henchmen, and then the lead should dress up like Bruno. They should all have machine guns as well. Yeah, and they go door to door singing this song a cappella, and the poor bastard totally. who's uh, Bruno has got no shoes on walking around in the snow. And then some at the end of it, somebody dressed like Gruber should fall off the top of the house, and everybody should like catch him like they're like he's crowd surfing, <laughs> and then be like, yeah. "Hey." Hey, Merry Bruce-mas, right? Merry like Bruce-mas. Seagram's golden wine cooler. Seagram's <laughs> golden wine cooler. It's wet it's and dry. it's dry. Yeah, there you go. We gotta get it's that. It's wet and it's dry. <laughs> my, 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 my. <laughs> I'm so on board with this. Hey man, this is you know what this is this is called a Bruce Miss miracle right here, folks. You're watching it happen in semi real time. It's actually not real time at all. All right, well, yeah, have fun, uh, everybody out there, and uh, I don't even know what to call it. Yes, I don't either. I don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Bruce Land. I was about to say like everybody out there in Radio Land, and I'm like, no, it's not Radio Land, but I don't know. Yeah, Pod Land. Everybody out there in podcast land, go out and carol the Seagram yes. song. Go go out and Bruce Miss Carol. Yeah. With Gruber, Gruber Minions. You totally won't get shot and or arrested if you go door to door singing that song. Bring bring the light and joy of Bruce Miss to thy neighbor. Exactly, man. Did everybody see, did we post that, uh, or wait, somebody linked us up to that, um, was it Green Tides that linked us up to that cool advent calendar? The Nakatomi advent calendar? Yeah, with every day Gruber falls another level or whatever. That was sick. Yeah, that was. It was Green Tides. That was old Warhammer himself. Old Warhammer himself. Pauldrons of laundry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm grabbing a beer with him in the next couple of weeks again. Ah, dude. Well, I'm going to grab a beer with Jar Higo, so there. Well, there. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I was trying anyway. to convey to the fans that uh another another Bruce Miss miracle was the advent calendar somebody handcrafted. It was gigantic and uh every day Hans Gruber falls another another level off the Nakatomi uh building. So uh you can probably find that if you fish around in our feed or I don't know, maybe we can share no, it. I'll put it I'll put it I'll make it the show art for this uh 
for this chunk of the show. So, Dude, nice idea. Yes, another Bruce Miss miracle. If you have a podcast player that shows art like Overcast or what do you do, Pocket Cast? Uh, I do Pocket yeah, Cast. Pocket yeah. Cast on Android or Overcast on iOS. They're both free, I believe. You also does Pocket Pool. Mm, yeah. And they show art when people put art in chapters. Wait, isn't Pocket Cast available on iOS? You were the one that f- recommended it to me. It is, yeah. Yeah. I would recommend Overcast, however, but Pocket Cast is also perfectly oh, fine. All right. Well, perhaps I'll check out Overcast as well. Not on Android, you won't. Oh, sorry. That's why I recommend it, too. Made by an Apple snob. Yes, made by an Apple snob, uncompatible. I would like to take all of Apple and put it inside a Tesla who also makes shit that is uncompatible with everything else and drive it on fire off a cliff. Or you could just self-drive it into the back of a truck. Boom, even better. I don't have to do (laughs) shit. All right, well, (laughs) Bruce Miss Vitriol aside... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so here, here's the here's the real Bruce Miss miracle, folks. What happens when you take Phil Hartman, the mom from Great Outdoors, Quark, Kit from Knight Rider, John Larroquette, Bruce Bruno Willis, and Kim, I don't know why they named her Nadia Basinger, and you throw them all into a punch bowl. What do you get? Another Bruce Miss miracle. That's right. I'm talking about the 1987 possible classic. I don't know. Hollywood debut of Bruce Willis. Blind Date. The debut of Bruce Bruno Willis. Maybe he did Seagram's commercials first, but this is his film debut. So we're talking about Blind Date tonight. Starring all those people and I feel like I'm forgetting somebody major in there. Wilford Brimley? No, Brimley's not in it. He played the dog? He should be. He should be in it. Brimley as the dog? Mm -hmm. That'd be great. Arf. Arf, arf, arf. Arf, arf, arf. My high level on this movie is that I'm so glad, Benny, that you said that I should think of it like a long, extended Seagram's Golden Wine Cooler commercial because it made it so much more enjoyable. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Oh, I know who I forgot, man. What? Rambo, the dog? Yeah, Rambo, played by Wilford Brimley. There you go. No, no, no. The person I forgot was, uh, what's his face? The douchey guy from Crocodile Dundee, man. Mark Bloom. The douchey, yeah, Blum. Bloom? Blum. The newspaper douchey guy. Don't you mean that you forgot George Coe playing General Scott Watson and Remo Williams? Oh, man, that's right. Freaking Woodhouse. Totally, man. That's who I forgot. (laughs) Crocodile Dundee douchey and Woodhouse. Can I just start over? (laughs) Can can we just start the podcast? Can we start the show over? We should start. We should make a podcast, guys. No, I don't mean the episode. I mean the whole show. Let's make a podcast just out of the intro. Okay. So anyway, in the punch bowl, you got Woodhouse from Archer. You got douchey from Crocodile Dundee and all those other people, dude. 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 Got it. (laughs) <laughs> got it shut up Seeger's <laughs> uh, <laughs> golden wine cooler Benny I'm with you on that one yeah yeah no 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 worries no I think it's I, I think it was important to um, sort of use that spoonful of honey to make this one uh, palatable totally I would have probably been a grumpy grumpy ass about it otherwise but it was <laughs> very silly but in a in a very a 1987 delightful way yeah, it's a. Uh, I think it's of a different generation, really. Mm. It's very slapsticky, you know. I mean, it's a Blake Ed- It's a Blake Edwards movie, so you know, this is the guy that's most associated with uh, probably Pink Panther movies, which which are great, but mm. slapsticky. And if you're not in the mood for that kind of humor, mm-hmm. which I don't know if anybody is nowadays, no. <laughs> um, but I like that. I like it's nostalgic. It's a nostalgic jo- subgenre of comedy. Yes. It's not, it'll come back around. It's just not really like the thing right now. Like really bad 70s pants to make your ass look huge? Uh, sure. Uh, is that a, is that 70s a, pants made your ass look huge? Just every, <laughs> every woman huge. in the world now wears pants that come up to, to their rib cage and they look terrible. Oh, those are, those are definitely 80s pants, my friend. Oh, okay. So I have a, 
not precise enough death and a why the fuck are we talking about 70s pants death? <laughs> those are mom jeans. All right. Yeah, those are two deaths. I got to say, the, the Ben's right about the mom jeans, but Ben, I got to say, in Chad's defense, I have seen some 70s style pants as ra- uh, around as well on the uh, on the kits On today. the circuit. I, I, I mean, I, don't get me wrong. I have seen women in uh, 70s shows wearing jeans that go up to their waist, but go up to their chins. I think it's those 80s mom jeans that make asses look big. Mm. Uh, no doubt. Chad, what was the second death? They, they don't define anything. The first, why the fuck are we talking about fashion death? And uh, you got the wrong decade asshole in fashion death. Yeah, Jesus Christ. Just un, un, <laughs> unmake that portion of the <laughs> just, just Just fucking nuke the whole thing from orbit. It's the only way to be safe. That's it. Boom. Nice one. <laughs> Benny gets a, Benny gets a, a death... Uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? The death for? bringer? No, I don't get anything because that just didn't exist. <laughs> oh, you get like a, no, you get a death, uh, you get like a free life token, dude, for <clears throat> such a great reference. An extra life. Yeah, but not an extra life, like a point towards an extra life. Okay. I'm going to shut up. Okay, that sounds good. <laughs> how many points, <laughs> how many points granted by the, the, uh, the all-powerful Moverine does it take to get an extra life? A one, a two, a three. <laughs> three. <laughs> nice, bro. Mr. Owl. How many legs does it take? I remember distinctly you getting one of the earliest deaths in the show. It's probably like episode three where you kept counting, Kev, and I yelled at you for not remembering the commercial properly. Mm, I've had a couple of like in, in 10 seconds into the show deaths. That was one of them. Yeah. A one, a two, a, two. a three. A four. <laughs> this is like, like, all right, Count Chocula. Stop it. No, stop, stop. <laughs> oh, dude, you just ruined it. Stop. A 29. <laughs> that is the dumbest joke. I love That's how really I'm funny. I'm amused you both are on that. Great. Merry Christmas, fellas. Merry Bruce-mas. Merry Bruce, Miss Jahigo and Chad. Sorry, whose turn is it for high level or just talking in general? Benny, Benny was talking about uh, this being a subgenre of comedy and a, of a generation before I talked yes. about 70s pants and fat mom asses. Dude, nobody's ass is fat. It's just big boned. Okay. Ben, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now that we know what Chad does not like in an ass. Um, yep. Or a <laughs> pants. Yep. So I don't, I don't know why, but uh, I've seen this movie a whole bunch of times. Um, the scene where there's an awesome a- ass over tea kettle that uh, Bruce Willis pulls off, stepping on a golf ball on this. That's just oh yeah, a, a really, really, really great slapstick moment. Um, and that's always stuck out at me for some reason. And that's really what this movie is all about. It's about... <laughs> As well as slipping on a golf ball. Eating shit on there a golf go. ball. I'm down. It's kind of like the pot of stew in, from that other show. <laughs> <laughs> Blade Runner? No, <laughs> Phrased by Wolves. That's what it's about, a pot of stew. <laughs> it's, about, it's, about, it's all about a pot of stew. Dude, I heard about the pot of stew. Fuck that Fuck show. That. I'm not watching that <laughs> shit. Well, you see, Hampton Fancher wrote about the stew and... <laughs> Dude, that was that was one of the sickest nerd out spasms ever, dude. Yeah, it was pretty good. It was really good. I like how our Bruce Smith show is like our best our best of. It's like our our highlight reel where we don't talk about Bruce Willis. We just talk about our favorite bits from our own show without playing the clips. <laughs> our, our favorite. <laughs> hey, remember that time we did bits. that thing that was really funny that no one remembers? Yeah. Right, exactly. Hey, remember how great we were in that episode? Remember when I made the Ridley Scott beef stew meme? That was fucking sweet. <laughs> I love it. The Dinty Moore. Oh, goodness. So awesome. Okay, so yeah. So awesome. <laughs> this this is definitely, in my opinion, the uh, this is the movie that the same Bruce Willis that did the Seagram's commercials. Oh, yeah did like it, this is that bruce willis like like what do you mean by that benny he just came straight off the porch put on a suit and tie and tried to be a uh yes tried to be tried to climb the corporate ladder and he was was not very good at it and then he met kim basinger and met a crazy chick his life just went uh to pot really 
totally. I mean, this, hot. this, I couldn't, like, I couldn't agree with you more, dude. This movie is a prequel to Seagram's Golden Wine Coolers and Die Hard. You know, he like, it is. He, he is a musician that went on to climb the corporate ladder, meets the crazy chick. And then by the end of the movie, he looks like McLean and Die Hard. And he does. To drop an early, <laughs> to, to drop an early nugget. Evidently, out the window of his office is the Nakatomi Tower under construction. Like what? Yeah, I I tried looking for, it, but the view out of his window you can barely see out of it in L.A. It has the Nakatomi Tower that's being built at the time. That this Holy movie is being shit! So like dude. this, that's that that's the ultimate nugget, bro. While he's trying to stuff every paper in his office, yeah, yeah, <laughs> just like folds up dot matrix printer paper and sticks it in his briefcase. Yeah, it was just ah, oh. dot matrix, nice name drop. Yes, wonderful. Yeah, totally. Do you? Man. I mean, this is just like the most Bruce Willisy movie in the world. This movie gave birth to Bruce Willis, the Hollywood star. It did. It's it's proto Bruce it's the, at its yeah. best. Yes. Proto Bruno. Original continuity Proto Bruce. Yeah, and he's good in it too, man. He is pretty good in it. I mean, yeah, I think, uh, I don't know, to throw in my high level, like, I, I agree with Benny. Like, it's, I think this is the, or I'll just kind of add on to what he said. Like, this is the end. Well, it's not really the end, but it's towards the, the kind of the twilight of like the slapsticky movies like this. Like, they were, they were big in like, you know, really from like, probably the 50s mm. all the way through till the 90s. You know what I mean? And then, you know, Seinfeld has some slapstick. Not a ton, really, mostly Kramer. But this is definitely the twilight of the slapstick, you know, and in in that, that Blake Edwards kind of quasi-silent film style. You know what I mean? So it's definitely that. So, I don't know, watching it, it was just kind of like, you know, <laughs> I was like, all right, cool, man. I was more like, I think what got me mostly jazzed about this was just like... Straight away, I was like, oh, it was like douchey newspaper guy from Crocodile Dundee. And then I was like, oh, dude, it's the mom from Great Outdoors. And then I was like, dude, Quark's the waiter. And then I was like, yep. You know, we had, uh, and then Woodhouse as the boss. And then you have Kit as the judge. I was like, this is sick, dude. <laughs> so I was really stoked about all that. And, um, you know, like the, the movie's good, man. There's no question about it. It's a good movie. It's like, it's definitely endgame Blake Edwards, you know, not to sound mean, but it's definitely <laughs> end game. That was one of his last movies, I think. I believe so. Yeah, one of his last ones. Yeah, like four or five. I was just checking out his his page because I wasn't familiar with him because he had like fifty fucking movies under his belt, which is like, wow, dude, that's it's like more than one movie a year. No wonder they're uh, they seem a little bit uh, formulaic. Well, not the, not only that, dude, he did a ton of television. He was doing radio dramas, you know. Like, the guy's legendary. There's no question about it. I mean, he directed Bref Breakfast at Tiffany's. Like, it's a legendary movie, you know, and 10 and Victor Victoria. Like, these are movies that, like, even if you've never seen them, you'll hear about them still in pop culture, you know. So I think it was kind of like this movie's a little bit endgame Edwards, you know. Like, I mean, it was funny. Like, it would have been funnier maybe 15 or 20 years ago, but... I could still see the comedy of now, it. This, you, you could totally see, like, Audrey Hepburn and Gregory Peck doing a 50s version of this movie. I think it's better. Oh, definitely. I think it's better set in the 80s with the kind of coked-out weirdness and stuff, but you could totally see it cast in the 50s. <laughs> the coked-out weirdness. I don't know. I was feel, I was super feeling the white Supra with the uh, the black uh, leather bra on the front. Like that was great. I haven't seen a bra on the front of a car in so long. I love I loved the bra, but I love John Larroquette trying to rip the bra off even more. Oh man, <laughs> Larroquette was just insane in this movie, dude. The Dodge Diplomat covered in paint, you know, it's great. <laughs> and flower, don't forget that. Are you drilling her? Are you fucking drilling her, man. Are you drilling her? <laughs> yeah, he was good. So yeah, I mean the movie's it's good. It's it's I I don't know I'd quite call it a classic, but it's you know, it's classic Bruno man because it's like his for it is his first movie. So I wouldn't call it a classic. I'd call it a mosquito trapped in amber that they like stick a needle into and rebirth the genre from in the future by genetically engineering. Uh, you know. Oh my God! Yes, cue the John Attenborough impression, please. Be, you know what I'm saying? Like it's a it's a crystallization yes. of that kind of genre, and it just kind of sits in time. And then his brother comes in, and he's like, "This little fellow has found a nice crunchy beetle to snack on." 
but it was enjoyable. I'd never seen it before. Had you seen it before, Kev? I've never seen this movie before. I, if I did, it was so long ago, I don't remember any of it, you know, but no, never seen it. And it, and it was enjoyable, you know, after a fashion. Totally. Was it a sit around the Bruce mystery movie for you, Benny, or was it like a TBS, it's on, I'll watch it kind of thing? <laughs> Uh, I don't know. Somebody from my family discovered it. I think it probably was, uh, I think it was probably one of my brothers. Yeah. Right. And, uh, it just ended up being something that was watched fairly regularly in the rotation. Yes. I like it. I think, I think being, being the first viewing for me, the first five, 10 minutes before the date, before she starts going fucking bananas, I was like, okay, yeah, this is kind of like a, you know, Somewhat of a romantic comedy. It'll just be like a charming kind of Bruce gets the girl. It goes crazy adventure bullshit. I was along for the ride. And then it just starts getting more and more and more slapsticky. And I because it, it doesn't start off with, you know, John Larroquette driving through three fucking storefronts. But by the time it gets to him driving through three <laughs> storefronts, it's quite funny. I think if it started off with something like that, you would have just been like, all right, it's one of those. It's a Jim Carrey movie, you know, but uh I like that it kind of built up a little bit because I just I didn't really expect it to. I wasn't as familiar with the director, Blake Edwards, and I didn't really know what to expect. And so I wasn't expecting the level of slapstick. And because they just went balls to the wall, falling off of balconies and, you know, hiding under beds and falling on golf balls. It was delightful by the time you got to that slapsticky part, I guess. Yeah, it really uh, <clears throat> sets the stage for that Seagram's Bruno, too, you know? Yeah, totally. <laughs> trying to you know he's all schlubby he's trying to get to work and do his thing you're like dude you should just be playing guitar on a porch somewhere man <laughs> definitely dude and the weird thing is is that he is an ex-guitar player in this ben yes he is indeed he is indeed um but you know so he finally he gets uh he gets uh nadia to go on a blind date with him and you know he brings her it's like you're set up so good. I mean, he even brings her on a date to go see Stanley Jordan play guitar in like the recording studio at one point. That was a baller move. <laughs> totally which, baller. Uh, which which kind of gets things kicked off, but it's just yeah, it's like oh yeah, yeah, oh uh, yeah, let's, let's go see Stanley plays. He's really good. He it's this guy who plays with his hands. <laughs> I used to be a guitar player. He's one of my best friends. I feel like there's like a bunch of impressions that we do that all sound like Steven Seagal. It's kind of, oh, yeah, I can't do it. <laughs> or at least coming out of my mouth, they do. <laughs> all right? I love them, yeah, though. I love sure. I love how Steven Seagal and Bruce Willis sound the same, and I totally buy it every time. Right? And that's how powerful of a martial artist that Seagal is. <laughs> is, is, that that he is, he is able to be channel Bruce through Willis. me. <laughs> I think I mean, you know, it, it might be possible that if you took sound bites from from movies of just like one word where you don't know where it's coming from, you might have a hard time distinguishing between the two. Yeah, I'm feeling that. Or not. I don't know. No, I buy it. Now with all that spare time I've got, I want to uh, take the audio from Steven Seagal movies and put them into Bruce Willis movies. Whoa, dude. Dude, that was a baller day at the guitar studio. And, you know, it was just kind of like, don't get her drunk. She goes crazy. And he's just like, oh, we'll just have a glass of champagne. Little did he know. Well, he did know because uh, Phil Hartman told him and his wife. I mean, he just said she goes crazy when she gets drunk. He didn't he didn't say, like, when she looks at a bottle of champagne, she'll fucking break it over your head, you know? Yeah, I mean, that was the one thing that I was a little like, you know, okay. Because it was like one glass of champagne. And then all of a sudden she's like, I'm going to take off your wig. And yeah. like, hey, I speak French. And you know what this guy said? You're a douchebag. Like, I was like, all right, dude. I guess. <laughs> I mean, it's the, yeah. It's the beginning of the slapstick. I guess it comes on a bit strong, but. Well, I'm just saying it's a bit of a reach. One glass of champagne <laughs> to get her to yep. like fucking crazy town. I mean, if she drinks, she loses control. <laughs> yeah, dude, I love her. Right? She has a chemical she imbalance. Gets wild. How, how perfect was it that Phil Hartman played a used car sale? Dude, Phil Hartman is like one of my favorite humans. It was so fucking delightful to see him in action. Same. And I, I love, like, what's great about Hartman, dude, just to, to sit on him for a second, is that, like, he can play a small part like that, like, because it was a small part. And it's so memorable because he's just such a memorable, goofy guy, you know? Yeah. Like, I love... Like, goofy. He's, he's funny. I love Paxton and everything, but I really secretly want to live in the universe where Phil Hartman plays Paxton's character from True Lies because I think he would have killed it. Dude, I want to live in the universe where Phil Hartman's my dad. <laughs> fair, fair enough. 
right? You probably wouldn't. Uh, you probably wouldn't enjoy his company as much, considering it. You know, guys be like having family, family uh, quarrels and stuff. But I would like the world where Phil Hartman was your dad. But but it's not real Phil Hartman. It's like Phil Hartman from every sketch. Okay. You know? it's yeah. Like right. Exactly. Like news radio <laughs> Phil Hartman. You know. Yes. I feel like if Phil Hartman was your dad and he started yelling at you, you just start laughing at him because his voice is so good. Totally, man. Like, he was yelling at Bruno in this way. He's like, you broke the back of my car. It was like, I've yeah, never totally. heard Phil Hartman fucking scream like that. That was amazing. Not with, like, any kind of twinge of real anger. You know what I mean? Yeah. All these cookies. Oh, Liz. <laughs> you know what? I was watching when I saw Phil Hartman. Put that all cookie I wanted down. To... <laughs> all I wanted to do when I saw Phil Hartman was I wanted to watch uh, House Guest with Sinbad and Phil Hartman. <laughs> I don't know if I've ever seen that one. Oh, it's so good, man. You think it's it would be terrible, but it's great. No, I know it'll be terrible. It's Sinbad and Phil. No, it's good. <laughs> it really is. It's really good. You think it'd be terrible? I know it's terrible, my friend. No, I'm <laughs> telling you, it's not terrible. You would love it. Oh, my God. In fact, we need to do that movie, and I guarantee you will like that. Movie. From the recommendation engine that brought you Airborne. <laughs> 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 no, no, it's great. No, it's totally great. <clears throat> oh, Chad, this movie is so good. You'll love it. Uh, put that movie down. Like, no. <laughs> <laughs> Phil fucking Hartman, dude. Love on, dude, house guest. I'm telling you, let's put it out to the fans, folks. Should we do house guest with Sinbad and Phil Hartman? Let us know. Right, I'll give it a whirl, man. I will give it a whirl. I know you're down, Benny. Whatever. Yeah, Phil Hartman. Awesome. Well, where where do we go now? <laughs> <laughs> we should uh, we should mention the crazy art show with the uh, like the ripper off of H.R. Giger. <laughs> yes, Giger esque. Like, yeah. <laughs> Dude, totally. <laughs> That's where we get the first taste of crazy Larroquette. Yes. Yeah, and he punches the the Giger sculpture. I thought that was really funny just because it was like, hey, you guys know that weird alien painting guy shit? Can we hire somebody to come and rip that off? Seriously, <laughs> man. Just put them all over the wall. What is up with that? Total fucking Giger ripoff. But in the, uh, in the fabled legendary IMDb trivia section, it said that that was a legit artist. I was like, I don't know about that, dude. <laughs> What? Yeah, it was <laughs> like they got the really popular artist, blah, 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 Rip Offenstein to come and show his provocative art. I was like, dude, that's nothing original about that. I didn't realize it was Rip Offenstein. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I don't know. I thought the uh, weird fanged penis head guy was very creative. Oh, yeah. Sure. Sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> scope, scope, scope. And then John Larroquette uh, puts his fist inside it. Mm -hmm. Jesus. Not in... A good way. Sculpture. <clears throat> That's the word I'm looking for. <laughs> yes. You were having a bit of a breakdown there. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. My brain is not working tonight, boys. I'm sorry. I know. Mine's not either, man. And he's having a strong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And the giant motorcycle fucking machine was pretty good. Now, every time I think when anyone, when either of you guys say I'm on your motorcycle, I'm picturing that the weird. The weird uh, motorcycle fucking machine that was uh the weird like animatronic motorcycle yeah. fucking oh, machine. Oh, that thing was bizarre. Why don't you guys go on more dates? You're just so pretty. It's like, well, because you take me to creepy S and M art shows. That's why you don't go on fucking dates. <laughs> <laughs> I got a funny question for you. <laughs> What's that, Marlon Brando from what, Godfather Two? What? Two? What? 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 <laughs> what? Why do you want on a date with somebody right now? <laughs> I was going to ask you exactly the same question. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> this is so adorable. I saw a slug calling on the edge of a razor blade. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, Bruno could totally reenact that scene now. He's old enough and bald enough. I totally think he should do that. I think Bruno's slowly turning into uh, <laughs> Brando. Well, what I was going to say, Ben, was that before I said that all, every time we do Seagal or Bruce, like they all sound like Seagal, but now Brando sounds like Seagal. Yeah, too. yeah, Brando, Seagal, Bruno, it's all coming together here. It's all the same shit. You got a right? new, you've I mean, got a new on. booberry thing going on. <laughs> a new roommate for the apartment, <laughs> Marlin. <laughs> 
Marlon Brando, is that you? <laughs> yeah, I think I swallowed a bug. <laughs> so before Brando came into this episode, I was about to say that I really enjoyed <laughs> watching this movie. But at the same time, like, <laughs> Nadia was so fucking batshit crazy. Yeah, really, It's the man. most implausible thing in the world that, that those two dudes would be fighting over by the end of this movie. I was just like... We've all met, we've all been on one of those types of dates or like met one of those girls, I I would imagine. And it's just oh like, God. get the fuck out of my life now and never come back. Hey, let me explain to you what zero chemistry looks like. <laughs> this date right here. <laughs> this is it. In real time. I love how he turns by the end of it and starts embarrassing her at that other party. And she's all like, don't, don't do it. And he's like, just like, fuck you. I'll do whatever the fuck I want. Bruh. Brucemas, everybody. Merry Brucemas. Merry, Merry Brucemas. Merry Brucemas, folks. Hope everybody's curled up with a barefoot Bruno underneath the Brucemas pole or whatever. It's a giant, isn't it? Wasn't it a giant Nakatomi Tower that you got to put in your? Sorry, underneath the Nakatomi Tower. Yeah. No, I think it's a uh, it's a computer monitor taped to an office chair. Oh, that's right. I think it was too. Ooh, that's right. <laughs> that's even better, <sighs> dude. I kind of, I totally want to do that. It'd be a pretty easy thing to put together every year. Hey, I got you guys some snazzy digital watches this year. <laughs> Word. So where are we here? Crazy chick. You guys, there's got to be more that you guys got on Crazy Girl. Well, I, I was just going to say that, yeah, well, agreeing that, yes, she is, in fact, batshit insane. And, like, I, I don't know, like, maybe it's because it's so slapsticky and it's 2021. Like, I was just like, oh, my godness. My godness. My goodness. It was... uh it was just a little crazy, man, you know, like taking off the Japanese <laughs> wife's hair and, you know, I mean, it just goes to crazy town so quick, you know, and she's just bonkers, dude. Mm -hmm. And then it's just, you know, I mean, it's semi formulaic or like we know the formula now. It's just like one calamity after the other. And then he, you know, flips the thing on its head and he goes all Frank Grimes on her and he just starts drinking like a fool and juggling pate balls and shit. Is that Frank Grimes from The Simpsons? No, when when <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> You're such a cock. When when he <laughs> does his Frank Grimes moment. No, I know. I'm just I'm literally just poking the Thank bear. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for that. <laughs> I want to juggle pad table balls now. Is that weird? Maybe. Uh, according to Bruno, you can't. So yeah, that's true. So eat shit or pate. They kind of look the same. I really like <laughs> eat shit for breakfast. I really enjoyed the. Uh, Hi, Walt Davis. Uh, I'm a gynecologist. Hey, I'm a brain surgeon. That was really, I really, that was the funniest part of that bit, I thought. I think when it comes down to it, uh, King, Kim Basinger is, is better at playing, like, drunk crazy than Bruno is. Yeah, no probably doubt. because she wasn't acting, from what I understand. Oh, really? She just get hammered? <laughs> Kim Basinger. Come on. Tell me about Kim Basinger. What did you think of Kim Basinger in this movie, Kim? On a serious note, like, I still cannot figure out why her name was Nadia. That just didn't fit at all. Mm. Like, all right, she's Cajun or whatever, or Cajun-rooted or from Louisiana or whatever she's the hell. She's from Baton Rouge. All right, she's from Baton Rouge. Baton Rouge. And her name's Nadia, which bugged me the entire movie. Like, you know, it's one of my stupid things. <laughs> Kev. <laughs> All right, grapes of Kev, <laughs> Nadia. All right, yeah, it was a grape of Kev. There, I admit it. All right, all right. It, just, it bugged me the entire movie. Okay, and so I couldn't figure out why her name was Nadia. It just didn't fit, and it was weird. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know. <laughs> that's all I have to say about the. Uh... <laughs> that's all I got to say about that. Cool. All right, uh, over over to you, Jarhigo. <laughs> um, other than the name Nadia, <laughs> over to Jarhigo. What did you think of Kim Basinger? <laughs> I thought she played crazy great. Um, Holy shit! I thought she did drunk crazy pretty good. Oh no doubt. It wasn't like it wasn't like over the top, you know. It was. Uh, it was just just right. Yeah. It was Goldilocks Quaker she was Oats. Fucking just Goldilocks right. porridge, right? Just right. Wait, what? I don't get the Goldilocks reference. It was just right. Just right. Kev. It wasn't too hot. It wasn't okay. too cold. It was just right. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. The bed was just the right size. The uh, <laughs> porridge was just the right temperature. <laughs> wait, 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 wait! What are you guys? What's this? Wait, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs>
Who is this? Who is this Goldilocks you speak of? At work, we had a customer, uh, and the last name was B U T T. <laughs> and I just, when the name got thrown up at the morning meeting, I just, I, all I did was I went like this. <laughs> but. <laughs> 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 Hey, Beavis. <laughs> and did you get crickets or did you get anything? Oh, dude, no. I always get crickets. And it was that was almost the best part. <laughs> <laughs> His name's Butt. <laughs> but. <laughs> <laughs> I can totally picture you in the police station just making a complete ass of yourself before getting yelled at by the Sarge. And nobody laughs at your joke. I can completely see this scene happening. Uh, I've had some serious crickets moments, dude. Hey, man, if I was there for what it's worth, I would have, I would have done Beavis for you. Yeah. Oh, I know you would have, man. Yeah, that's a problem. You need a Beavis there. Yeah, you need, you need somebody part to, like, of the problem for sure. Pick up the other half of the joke so that everybody gets it. Definitely. Does the John Larroquette fan club want to chime in? Uh, I don't, where did that all come from? Like, I mean, John Larroquette's awesome. Why? Why was that a thing before? Remind me. Uh, you went on a fucking huge John Larroquette spaz out because he was in a movie Giant once. Giant spaz out. <laughs> so you well, like you hardcore. Gigantic. There was like a five minute long John Larroquette love fest. You went on about John Larroquette and the John Larroquette show and how amazing he is. And yeah. Like, and then you started just rattling off everything he'd ever been in that no one had ever seen before. Wow. You really watched it. Literally started reading IMDb. It was great. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that was your favorite was part, good right? Good content. Then? Good content. Yeah, I remember doing the show notes for it. It was fun. <laughs> <laughs> All right. No, I'm not going to go on a John Larroquette rant. I mean, he's, I love he was John. Good I in like it. John Larroquette. I like John Larroquette, too. Yeah, he's done a lot of funny stuff, and he was good in this. He plays, he plays a good crazy. You he know? Was the, but he was like the nuanced crazy. It was like crazy, yes, but definitely. a rich kid. So, like, Entitled, fucking preppy, crazy, but also like when mommy and daddy yeah. and the judges weren't around, he was even more crazy. Paint shop monkey car crazy. Yeah, man. I think uh, I think this movie was a great advertisement for the durability of the uh, 1986 Festival <laughs> of uh, Dude, yeah. <laughs> takes a licking, keeps on ticking. That's it. There you go. You drive it through three stores, no problem. Yeah, I just I just love that he defaulted to. Uh, Are you drilling her? Like, <laughs> oh, that was so weird, dude. <laughs> but great. Just, just like it took him no time to get from zero to. Are you drilling her? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then the crazy, the I, I thought it was just like they fist fight or whatever in the uh, art studio, and then he ends up chasing them down in the car, and like John Larroquette's trying to freaking run him over. I loved. I absolutely loved. That Bruce Willis originated ghost riding the whip by taking John Larroquette's car and fucking jumping out of it as it rolled down the road. Yes. Like that was like the best. Yes, that was that awesome. was a fucking level ten maneuver right there, dude. It was like fucking hell yeah, bro. You don't just punch the guy in the face, you steal his car and then jump out of it. It was so perfect. Yes. yes. I love that. Yes. But the reason I bring it up is because he goes back and gets in the car and he's like, your crazy ass boyfriend tried to kill me and you're fucking psychotic. And then she's like, oh, 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 I'm so sad. He's like, you know, I'm sorry. It's like, I'm not fucking sorry. Like, why would you say sorry to the chick? Like, what the fuck, man? I know, right? It's just like, fucking, we're going home. I never want to see you again. Fuck off. (laughs) But meanwhile, he's like, oh, I didn't mean to make you sad. It's like, dude, you just got me fired, ripped the pocket <laughs> off by, you know, like, what are you talking about? Yeah, totally. Fucking crazy shit. Do we need to talk about Kit? Oh, yeah, I totally didn't recognize him as the voice of Kit, which is super obvious. I kind of took an off off uh, podcast mic death. No, yeah, that's all right. I didn't, I didn't, uh, it's not, I don't think it's that obvious. Yeah, it, it, Jesus, he was great. Yeah. You all right, Agnes? <laughs> Yeah, the, like when when she gets hit in the head with the gavel, you know, that's like super powered slapsticky, and then she like yes. droops into the droops into the chair. And then for some reason, he keeps repeating that every time he's dozing off, when something happens. Yeah, I I liked uh, I, one of the things I liked was the the reveal of like him being like the dad. Like I I did, totally didn't see that coming. I thought that was a funny funny device. Yeah, and it just ties it into the wedding at the end too. Like. 
it wouldn't have been half as it would have been only it would have been much less funny if it was different characters playing his mom and dad you know rich mom and dad yes i think this is the only thing i can think of that uh, i've actually seen him act in outside of doing the voice of kit yeah i thought the same thing but boy meets world was a show that was on when i was that was like his yeah that was his big thing one of his big things. He po- he pops up from time to time here and there in the various different TV shows and movies, man. But Boy Meets World with, uh, uh, what's his face? Savage's brother. Was that Fred Savage's brother? I'm pretty sure it was Ben Savage, yeah. This is uh, Freddie Momoa. Yeah, Freddie Momoa, yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. I kind of thought that, the just to like get into the plot here a little bit, I kind of thought that the job would play a bigger role like it was an awful lot of setup for him to lose his job and then just like get fired and that's it yeah i thought that was kind of weird too i kind of liked it though like it kind of sets you up to think that it's going to be some huge like redemption he's going to become the hot shit at work kind of hero story but it just completely goes off the rails you know yeah i like that i like it better that it was like that yeah same and there was no like you know yeah there was no redemption arc and like his boss was like, you really are brilliant. Wah, 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 wah. And Mark Bloom. I like, I enjoyed the, you know, Mark Bloom, the dude that doesn't do any work, but looks slick and bangs chicks in limos or whatever. Like it was, it was, a. I had the same reaction that Bruce Willis did when Denny was telling the story where I was like, dude, please stop talking in the fucking elevator. Like, I don't care about your story. It was, yeah, well played. And uh, especially like, cherry on top when he sticks his card and Kim Basinger's hand and she calls it out. Like, it's just really good. Yeah, totally. Just the whole trope of like, you know, the dude that's like staying up late to try and get the job done and showing up late and like, you know, disheveled, uh, getting the shit end of the stick while the guy that doesn't really fucking do anything but manages to show up looking good and on time, like reaps all the benefits. You know? <laughs> like, yeah. Gotta be more like Denny. Look at Denny here. It's Armani, sir. Definitely wound up in a situation like that oh no before. doubt so like, like like literally that's all that matters like uh, oh okay well I'll just, i'm gonna stop trying to do anything here and just make sure i get to work on time and uh <laughs> you know <laughs> tuck so in my like, shirt and fucking comb my hair okay great cool I, I find a lot of times with these tropes it's like they're tropes for a reason and they really hit the nail on the head with a lot of real world and real world stuff and you know they tend to dial it up to 11 in the movies and then the person gets their comeuppance and you're like yeah Fuck you, Mark, yes. Mark from accounting, you dick. <laughs> you, know, like, you secretly get your like little victory. Yeah, I like uh, <laughs> Mark from accounting. I like when guys like that get their comeuppance, man. He got his for sure, man. No doubt. It was good. She goes and fucking tells the fiance it was perfect. It was totally perfect. That was the, o- that, that was the only uh, moment with Crazy Kim Basinger where I was like, yeah, right on. That's funny. Go and, get, go and fuck the slime ball over. So should we move on to the gas station disco? Oh my god, man! Uh, sure. The disco was totally <laughs> weird. Yeah, I love it. it's like oh, we're at a gas station. Hey, there's a disco next door. Let's go in there. <laughs> it was totally it Roadhouse was like too. Fern and Freddy's or something. Yeah, like yeah, it was a bit Roadhouse. And the really badly choreographed fight sequence inside, which I just I wanted Swayze to pop out with his fucking mullet perm, dude. Dalt. Dalton and, uh, yeah, fucking Sam Elliott. He would, they would have totally done it. And the money dude in the white jacket was the dad from Parker and Lewis Can't Lose. <laughs> <laughs> also brother of the guy that played the soldier in Rambo. <laughs> <laughs> I started laughing so hard when I saw it because I was like, oh, I cannot wait to tell Chad this and just listen to him not care. <laughs> You're dealing with an expert in IMDb. <laughs> you don't want to seem to accept the fact that you're dealing with an expert in IMDb. Google. Names, films, Typing. theater. Reading. <laughs> Stealing nuggets. <laughs> fucking disco scene, man. Disco too. I just fucking, you know, he's just so over it. That's the That's the, like, implausible and yet enjoyable moment where bruce willis goes from wanting to stab this girl and leave her on the side of the road to being like ah we'll have a dance and a kiss and fall in love it's just like no you won't bro <laughs> and fucking jaws from james bond tries to throw him out at the bathroom door it wasn't jaws from james bond but kind of looked like him kind of 
And the dad from Parker Lewis Can't Lose. And the dad from Parker Lewis Can't Lose. Thank you. Son of the Beach. He was from Son of the Beach as well. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The Howard Stern Show. I know you don't care. It's fine. <laughs> some some of the fans care, Chad. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have to just briefly mention the yeah, wonderfully cheesy music of uh, Billy Vera and the Beaters. Oh, no doubt, man. Yeah, dude. Totally. From the bar. Also, the fact that the, the saxophone player literally looked like a live action version of Murder he Face did. and Death Clock. Dude, right? He was like a yacht rock murder face. He yeah. was a yeah, yacht rock murder face, definitely. Wow, that's amazing. He totally did. Feeling that, bro. We need him to play murder face in a live action remake that is bound to end up on Netflix. Oh, a live action version or uh, movie that we're gonna make about a us. Metalocalypse. In this show, yeah. Yeah. Wait, we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna make a live action because <laughs> we're not live action right now. Clearly, we're, no, we're not. animated characters. We're animated, like voiced by <laughs> voice actors. We're like the gorillas. That's right. We are. That's what people don't realize. That's the brilliance of this show. <laughs> Is that we're played by voice actors? I love it. It's completely scripted. <laughs> every terrible joke that goes nowhere every is on purpose. Terrible joke. Every horrible reference. Every mention of John Larroquette. Every ejection. Every ejection scripted. That's the Shyamalan twist here, everybody. Wanted mm-hmm. to bring it to you on this second annual Bruce Miss special. Dude, I love that he's a real action, real life murder face. I enjoyed the shit out of that band. And that's very Roadhouse too, man. Have the actual band play. Oh, definitely, man. Yes. When was Roadhouse again? You should know this by heart, Kev. 87, man. So it's the same year. Same year. I think so, yeah. Wow. I, I think these I think these movies exist in the same universe. I think they do too, man. One takes place in bumfuck Idaho, and the other one's in in um, California. No, it's not. It's uh, Jasper, Missouri, dude. Come on. Oh, sorry. Yeah, next to bumfuck Idaho. Next. You know they're getting a Walgreens. J C Penny <laughs> is coming here because of me. So so where does uh, where does uh, bow tied jaws guy fall in on the uh, in the pantheon of uh, legendary bouncers? bouncers. <laughs> you could probably take the chubby guy from Roadhouse. I bet. He probably he's like one of those guys that worked with uh, Wade Garrett. Yeah, like in, you know one of the one of the various bars. Dude, yeah, definitely him and Wade Garrett came up in the same. Yeah, like, right at the same bar in like Toledo or something. The same class. Like they both went their separate ways. <laughs> yeah, so like if he rolled if he rolled in with Wade Garrett, you know, like he'd be like a guy that like taught taught uh, Dalton a couple of things here or there. Yeah. You know me, ho, that reminds me of the time that old Johnny Bowtie Jaws <laughs> <laughs> packed his bags and went to Los Angeles. <laughs> Los Angeles. Yep. That's right. He's going to go make it big out in one of the clubs out there next to a petrol station. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I totally shit. picture the bouncer school being like Hogwarts and you have to wear a hat and like, you know. Dalton was like a Hufflepuff and fucking mm. Texas Jaws dude was a Gryffindor or some shit. <laughs> <laughs> and then they go to like cocktail making classes and Tom Cruise teaches how to make cocktails. Harry Potter meets Roadhouse. You know, the more I think about it, the less I like it and the more I want to see it. In the genre bending sequel, <laughs> they will make you shit in your pants. The Brown Bomber. <laughs> uh, so, um... Disco Stew. Okay, cool. Disco Stew. Season 6, episode 15. What else is there to talk about about the Disco Club? Um, nothing. Let's go move on to Bits and Bobs. I don't know. Fucking, it's Bruce-mas. We should enjoy ourselves. It's it's Bruce-mas. We should all be cuddling in our Bruce-mas sweaters around the office office chair. <laughs> Well, you know, kids, not every Bruce Miss can be epic. So. Yeah, we had the one, we had the five days of Bruce Miss last year, and then now we have the one half-ass day of Bruce Miss. <laughs> this is not a half-ass day. This is not a half-ass Bruce Miss. This is full bore, dude. Full throttle nitrous injected Bruce Miss. Total nitrous, man. Total nitrous. All right, next next item on the blind date list. Go. Sometimes Bruce comes down the chimney. Sometimes he tries to squeeze in through the cat door. Just, mm. uh, this is a cat door, Bruce Miss. Yeah, yeah, he's really more of like a <laughs> cat door kind of dude. Guy. I just am picturing like Bruno in a vent kind of thing, where like he sticks his bald Bruno head through a cat door. Like <laughs> there you go. That would be. I just would 
pay any kind of money for Bruce Willis <laughs> to stick his head through my cat door that I don't have. I'm going to get a cat door so he can stick his head through it. And anything anything duct-like yeah. you know, is, is good. Yeah, yeah. A few laughs. Sometimes, sometimes he makes his way through the HVAC system. Come out to the coast. We'll have a few laughs. <laughs> Fucking California. <laughs> Uh, oh, you know, I should have got a box of Twinkies for today's Brucemas. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I let you down. Oof. Wow. You didn't. I left the I left the Twinkies in the past. I don't know if I could do a Twinkie, but I kind of want to. Mm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. They're delicious. I just I just uh, managed to have the one. When you pop, you can't stop. The one package. The one whole package. One whole box. No, not a box. What's in the box? Pain. So what do you... Uh, in the pantheon of this movie, what was the big party that they went to? Was it like her parents' party or some shit? Or it was obviously a socialite party, but is it ever said whose party it is? No, it's some random party. Her friends. Where he's embarrassing her and yeah. it's so embarrassing. I liked how uh he's making an ass of himself juggling pate and there's like a couple of rich dudes in the background that are actually finding it really funny. <laughs> like, yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> that would totally be me, you know, like if I ended up in a black tie, I'd be like, this is great. I want to go hang out with that guy. That's funny. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, the uh, I, I found myself laughing out loud at uh, him and John Lorquette going over the uh, the balcony and just like that entire ridiculously bad fight scene where they're just kind of <laughs> making him dance, grab yeah, and then yeah, making him do the moment. I fucking hate that shit. <laughs> 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 <clears throat> For some reason, all of that that whole fight sequence just uh, tickled my funny bone. No doubt. This last watching. No doubt. And the cops come in and Bruno's in trouble. It's the same with the cops with the uh, the girl gang that were going to cut his balls off or whatever. Yeah, what, what was up with that? Yeah, what was up What was that? up with the girl gang Weird. and what was up with the fucking house? <laughs> that whole sequence of events was just bizarre. He brings her to the middle of nowhere. They pull the house. They tow the house away before they can get up to it. <laughs> and then he turns around and is fucking nissan has been like scrapped yeah that the house going away by the construction work like now that i know that the dude was the writer for the pink panther that makes makes way more sense but at the time i was just like what the fuck it's about the whole sequence of the house getting towed away and then him turning around and his car being parted out and then getting stuck up by a girl gang and then trying to like rat them out to the cops and having to do a sobriety check with kim basinger doing a base basinger doing her uh like miming him the entire time, essentially, <laughs> which was pretty funny. The uh, the pool sequence, as they're jumping into it, there's the most fabulous, like, electro tom drum sequence yeah. that's going on. Like, like the whole piece of music is basically like, you know, like those octagon, like, electronic totally. drums. Like <laughs> Phil Collins is there. <laughs> yes, he was. It was totally Phil Collins. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> just giving the electric Tom performance of a lifetime. Yeah, yeah, I'm totally with you. I, I hate to bring it all the way back to the beginning of the movie, but uh, something was nagging me about uh, the the French waiter, and I I did not realize that it was Quark. Oh man, yeah, same. I was like, I didn't know this guy. I know that guy. He's the hell is that guy? He's so Quark when he's not even Quark. You know what I mean? He is. He I mean, is. unfortunately, because that's what he's most famous for, I guess. But well, it's a great, it's a great role, man. I mean, it's dude, it's, it's a pantheon role, bro. But I don't know, whatever. He's still he's great no matter what, dude. He's played little bit parts in a bunch of stuff. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm looking at him now. I'm like, oh, of course. But uh, something something was nagging me through that entire thing, and I couldn't put my finger on it. And now, of course, no, he's perfect for a movie like this too, man. The snooty French waiter, you know, trained in Paris. I thought you were talking about the other dude, the Mater D, because he's in a bunch of shit too. Uh, no, that yes, that dude's been in a bunch of stuff too, man. Yes, uh, he played. Oh yeah, he played Babu Bot on Seinfeld. That's his. That oh, was his, that's where I know him from. Right, that's where you know him from. Very very bad man. Yeah yeah yeah, totally. Right, but ironically enough, Armin Shimmerman, uh, Quark, was also on Seinfeld. He played the Stan the Caddy. There you go. Oh, wow. Yeah, looking at the picture of Quark is just, yeah. That would have been a rough, like, would have been cool to play Quark, but, dude, you would have been sitting in that makeup chair for, like, seven hours a day. It'd be the worst. He was. He was, and he did. 
Crazy, man. Can you imagine if you only had to, like, you know, film one, like, two-minute scene? That's it. In an episode, and you had to fucking do 13 hours of, or whatever, of makeup just for that. Imagine if, <clears throat> imagine if you asked Nadia to perform Umox. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, you played that well, dude, the douchey French waiter. I love how just, like, they both were egging each other on and getting more and more mad. You mean Bruno and the waiter? All three of them, really, because Basinger was having a great time. Like, All three of them, really, yeah. Translating and getting Bruno more mad, you know? And the French guy was just getting so French about it. Yeah, I mean, Bruno was really on the periphery. Yeah, but he got he got souped by Nadia, man, because she kept blowing it up. Mm-hmm. That's what was good about it. I mean, there's a lot of great stuff that we kind of left on the table in the restaurant scene. Like, just, there, there's a... Uh, Christ, the character name. Uh, oh, oh, right, yeah, Mr. Yakamoto. Like, <laughs> once the wife leaves, there's like a great scene where like they're they're like fawning over him, trying to console him, and just like the look on that actor's face is priceless. <laughs> With the cigarette, yeah, priceless. And like you know, it's like right right before uh, Nadia comes out of the bathroom and like tries to hire a lawyer for his wife to divorce him or whatever. But yes, it's just like there's just like little bits in there in that whole scene that are that are really great. Yeah, definitely. So, like in the pande- pandemonium that ensues that entire exchange. Agreed. And that's totally a Pink Panther scene too, man. All of the all the definitely stuff. yes very. yes very Pink Panther scene. Well, since we're jumping around, why don't we do bits and bobs? Yes, let's do that. Bruno's uh, cleavage three-pointer. Oh, yeah, that was... With the olive, that was... <laughs> Dude, you'd get canceled in a heartbeat if you did that today. Yeah, the cleavage shot was... That was funny, dude. Again, like, very slapsticky, very Pink Panthery, very Blake Edwards. And we touched on it a little bit, but just the Larroquette versus Bruno throughout the whole movie was pretty great. Yeah, I mean, it was really tropey, the, like, not paying attention and then crashing into the storefront. But it was good. <laughs> the first time it happened, you're like, all right, that's silly. And then the second time it happened, it was I laughed. And then the third time I laughed, even I was just like, all right, the one example of telling the same joke over and over again, and it keeps getting funnier. Yeah, um, I don't know. I found it a little, like, I mean, I know this is, like, a way out in left field slapstick comedy, but, like, I don't know, the reveal of him being a lawyer, it was just, like... I don't know. It's a little too. It was too much. Like her, her being that wasted off one glass of champagne was too much. You know, it was like <laughs> totally implausible. Even for even for a slapstick comedy movie, I was like, I don't know about that, dude. <laughs> okay. What? <laughs> you I want like my contribution? Movies. I'm with you. Well, look, there's there's like funny and outlandish situations, and then there's just like I don't know, whatever. That seems too much. Like yeah. her getting that shit faced off one glass of champagne. Right. Yes. It's it's a shitty premise. It's not the most believable thing in the entire world. But well, it's not, the it's the movies. So yeah. No. 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 I get it. But it's like you're you know, there for it or you're not. I, fair enough. But at the same time, it's like if she had had three glasses of champagne, that I could get way more behind. But one is like I don't know. It takes away from something. At the same time, I kind of like how. She has a glass of champagne in the guitar place and then gets tipsy, walks into the restaurant, rips Bruce Willis's pocket off his jacket, starts acting like a fucking idiot, sits down at the table, and Bruno's like, a bottle of your finest champagne. It's like, dude, you don't need any more champagne. <laughs> like, what are you doing? Totally. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Whatever. Maybe I'm just being a Grinch. You can't be a Grinch on Bruce Miss Bra. Sorry, dude. Pissing in our fucking Bruce Miss cornflakes. You're pissing in our... Punch filled with pate. Yeah, I'm sorry, guys. I'm going to have to pee in your Cheerios. You washed your filthy pate-covered hands in our fucking punch. <laughs> Ugh, <laughs> gross. And then you did the mambo. Yeah. And then you did the mambo. Guess uh, what? Now you're, now you're going to jail. La- I think my last bit, bit slash Bob is I enjoyed the kit. Knight Rider Kit, William Daniels, as the judge sitting at and presiding over the court scene. I think he did a great job there. And I especially liked the, the stupidity of him being like a hard-ass judge who's, then you find out it's, you know, he's like, I'll never, I'll never practice in your jurisdiction again. And he's like, okay, let's do this. You know, he totally breaking the law and bending the rules. It was funny. Yeah, I, that was one of my favorite bits of the movie was that reveal. Uh, aside from the cast, which was my other... My other bit. Just favorite, the pure the pure part. hatred he has towards his kid. Yes. It's like, she doesn't love me. He's like, well, I don't either. So what's the problem here? Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, she's not quite what I expected. What do you mean? Well, she's not blind, for starters. <laughs> <laughs> like, the dynamic between father and son there, it shows you exactly why John Larroquette's character is the way it is, and it's so viable. More plausible than the one drink. That's it. <laughs> Slightly more plausible. Than the Mildly. One bottle more of plausible. champagne. She completely loses control. <laughs> <laughs> she completely loses control. Well, th- I definitely think we can close out uh, bits and bobs with just another uh, another shout out to Phil Hartman being the best guy in the world, best dude in the world. Yeah, totally, man. I'm with that, dude. R.I.P. Phil, you were the best. Nuggets test ratings. Okay, nuggets. I don't, I don't, this isn't really a nugget. I mean, it's sort of a nugget, but George uh, Coe, who plays Woodhouse from Archer, uh, he was uh, in another EBD film, and that would be Remo Williams. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the adventure begins. As the general or whatever? As the general of the 45 minute uh, Statue of Liberty fight scene. The 45 yes. minute hold on to a log. Yes army fight scene is it the army fight scene or the statue of liberty fight scene statue of liberty fight scene is like forever dude word well my only nugget was the uh nakatomi towers in this movie which i think is kind of awesome that is an awesome nugget yes and a nice uh sort of uh genetic genetic connection between this movie and die hard no doubt uh what about you have any uh nugs benoit i know you don't usually but every once in a while we get lucky not this time I can read on him DV if you want. Do it. No, no, I think Chad and I do that enough. And by that, I mean me. We kind of mined all of the Bruno Nuggets last year for the five days of Bruce Smith, to be fair. That's true. That's why this is so short. Deaths? Uh, dude, I, there's like one recorded death. There's two. <laughs> Let's make it three then. <laughs> but there's one recorded death because I was just like... <sighs> the whole show (laughs) (laughs) no i was not like that the whole show all right we had we had three deaths we had the bruce uh, my my death was bruce miss not christmas right in the beginning which was pretty pretty egregious uh then chad you had a double why are we talking about pants death and the wrong decade asshole fashion death Mm -hmm. yep and then shortly after that, when we lose the recording of deaths is when you ejected from the show. <laughs> You're such a tool. <laughs> ratings? Uh, ratings. Okay. Benny, why don't you go, bro? Sure. Uh, no poetry. I'm going to say this is a seven. Yep. There might be a little bit of nostalgia at play there for me, but um, it's, it's slapstick. It's kind of like comedy from a different era or comedy from the end of an era. Um. It's Bruno straight out of the Seagram's commercial. It's it's Bruno DNA, man. You gotta love it. And a, a host of colorful characters. Yes. And actors portraying them. Absolutely. And live action murder face. <laughs> live action murder face is totally a bonus point. That is a big bonus point, for sure. This one's tough. I, I feel like because it's a first viewing for me, I, I think the nos- lack of nostalgia is going to definitely not help. Um I totally buy that it's the end of a comedic genre kind of era. And um, just looking at the algo in the mid fours, which is essentially a Kevin Ben seven. um, There are things like, you know, Banana Way and Over the Top, Conan. All excellent films. (laughs) Yeah, I I kind of feel like those are all like so bad it's goods. I mean, only the strong is pretty shit to be fair, but. Like, I enjoyed watching this movie. I definitely get why it's beloved by some, and I definitely get why why we're talking about it at Bruce Smith's. So I'll say it's a 4.4. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it, and I'm really, again, so happy that I was told to think of it like a Barefoot Bruno commercial because it really helped me get in the, get in the zone for it. Definitely, dude. I agree with that part. Uh, I would say that plus the... Uh, it was just wonderful seeing all of these various different actors from these other great things that I've seen over the years in this movie together. Yeah. Uh, it was a big delight for me and part of my seven score, as I'm going to echo Jarhigo, feel the same way. Uh, no nostalgia because I don't recall seeing this. I might have, but I don't remember it. But 
Uh, again, similar to, uh, kind of similar to I Love You to Death. Like, you know, this, like you guys said it, like the slapstick is kind of like, you know, we're not, we're not in an era of slapstick currently at the moment, but like, I still can appreciate the, the, the brilliance of the film or not the brilliance of it, but the quality of it and the quality of the writing and the comedy. So I think that's where my seven comes from. You know, it's and it's it's a Bruno first, man. You know, it's like gotta love it, dude. Yeah, debut of Bruno's pretty good. Like it, yeah, it brought Bruno to our lives, which yeah, I'm down with. <laughs> Gets bonus points for that. Mm, mm. Well, Merry Brucemas, everyone. I hope you all have a fabulous Brucemas. Yes, Merry Brucemas to all, and to all a good hostage situation. Something. Yes, hostage situation. There you go. I like that. <laughs> Be sure to sit by the fire with a nice barefoot Bruno and uh, maybe a Twinkie. and uh, Warm those cut-up feet by the fire. Yeah, there you go. Warm your cut-up feet. And remind your, your wife that kind of is starting to love you again sitting next to you that you're getting too old for this shit. It has nothing to do with Bruce Miss. Weep a weapon is... Uh, in the same universe, and also a Christmas movie. There you go. There you go. I had an argument the other day with someone that was talking about it. They were like, I don't think Die Hard is a Christmas movie. And I was like, first of all, I'm going to fucking school you right now. And second of all, I don't know if I like <laughs> you anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it is a Christmas movie, God damn it! It is most definitely a Christmas movie. If it was not Christmas, the movie would not have happened. It was a Christmas party at the Nakatomi Tower. Somebody just said that to me today, straight off the bang. They were like, oh, that's like such a great Christmas movie. I was like, there you go. There you have it. There you go. That is true, sir. What you just said is true. Uh, what are we doing next week, Slyclops? It's probably worth uh, worth saying that we're going to be taking a week off around the holidays. So if you miss us for a week, that's yeah, fine. one week, people. We're taking one week away <laughs> out of two-something years. Yeah. Um, next we're doing the Netflix live action Cowboy Bebop, which I'm excited to talk Ooh, about. Yes, me too. No one else is, but which I is am. already canceled. Uh, it's already canceled because they're fucking assholes. Did they seriously already cancel it? They did. They already canceled it. Wow. It, no season two. Such bullshit. And that's what happens when a bunch of nerds get together and start hating on shit. Yep. There's no love in the world for people trying different stuff. Wow. So I'm excited to talk about it, and I'm a little bit bummed that it isn't going to be a second season. I don't know. You kind of, like, I am bummed. I wish there was a second season, but at the same time, like, sometimes a one-season show can just be like, that was enjoyable, I enjoyed it, and there there aren't 17 more seasons to ruin it, maybe. I don't know. Yes, yes. That's a, that's a good point. It would have been nice to get, you know, a full arc out of it, but if anyone's watched Game of Thrones, you'll know what the uh, other end of that spectrum looks like. A mm. sphincter. Yes. It's better to better to crash the plane than land it badly. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> I like how badly that analogy works, but I'm totally on board. <laughs> yeah, I'm with yeah. you. Right on. All right, well, there you have it, folks. It's better uh, to shoot it out of the sky. There you go. How's that? So, Cowboy Bebop. <laughs> next week. Yes, as Ben was saying, Cowboy Bebop next week. Thanks for joining us, folks, and we'll see you next time. Merry Christmas. Merry Bruce Miss. Merry Bruce Miss. And that's going to wrap up this week's episode, folks. You can find the show notes for this episode in your podcast app O choice or on our website, ebd.fm forward slash episodes forward slash 137. You can support us in a numerous, uh, a number of, sorry, a number of wonderful ways. You can rate us, review us on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts. You can also uh, support us on Patreon, patreon.com forward slash EBD podcast. And the best way to do it is, of course, telling a friend, check out the show. Follow us on social media. We use the hashtag or the handle rather at EBD podcast everywhere we lurk. So please come lurk with us. That's it. Join us for the uh, already deep sixed live action Cowboy Bebop. And thanks for joining us for this uh Bruce Miss Miracle. See you next time, folks.
Beedy, beedy, beedy. Stop into it.